here in our gospel reading today, the most quoted verse in scriptures that seems to justify the so-called doctrine of the separation of the church and state. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. However, if you examine this verse very closely, you will soon realize that this is more than just a principle about the relationship between the church and the state. What Jesus wanted to say here is about the way we should live our lives. In the first place, Jesus simply answered the question raised by the Pharisees, whether it is lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not. And this question was supposed to be a trap because if Jesus would say no, that could mean sedition and he could be put into prison. But if he will say yes, then he could also lose the favor of the people who dislike paying the census tax. So he gave them a wise reply, not a categorical yes or no, but a challenge. You give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but give to God what belongs to God. Unfortunately, as time goes by, as uh, centuries unfold, these words of Jesus acquire a political undertone. And later on, it became a byword in contemporary society, emphasizing the need to erect a wall between the church and the state. The American president, Thomas Jefferson, considers it as absolutely essential in a free society. Dili pwede manghilabot ang simbahan sa pamalakad sa guberno. Mamanusab ang guberno ngadto sa simbahan. There is a divide, there is a wall. In our context here in the Philippines, we know that whenever a bishop or even a priest would make a political commentary in his homily, or just the case when the CBCP makes a pastoral statement that has something to do with the issues of the day, they are immediately criticized as meddling in political affairs. I get the impression also that people are, are sick of hearing political commentaries given by ecclesiastics. They would rather wish to hear the word of God preach. Having said this, however, I would like to believe that when Jesus said, you give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God, you know, the emphasis here is more about the challenge of giving to God what belongs to God. And if we dig deeper, we will come to understand that even the exercise of civil powers belong to God. Kay unsa man ang naa sa kalibutan nga dili iya sa ginoo. Is there anything in this world that does not belong to God? Nothing except perhaps our sins. What is it in the world that belongs to God? Well, we can readily say everything. Everything belongs to God. Psalm number 24 puts it so well. And it says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world in all who live in it. 
ang kalibutan iya sa ginoo o ang tanan nga anaa sa kalibutan the world in all its fullness belongs to God walay naa diha sa kalibutan nga dili iya sa ginoo ug sa ako nang nasulti kung naaman kana mao ang atong sala Sadly, brothers and sisters, we live in a culture of compartmentalized world. You know, we wake up in the morning, we eat our breakfast, we go to work, we spend so much time working, we come home, sometimes we meet our friends, on Sundays we go to Mass, we pray a little, And most of the time, we do our own thing as if God is not a part of it. In our compartmentalized world, the space for God is just one compartment. It shows in our attitude, in our disposition. When we say like, I unya na lang ng ginoo kay busy ko. Makasarabu, makasabot ra ng ginoo. Ako'y nadunggan nga uh, anecdote na uh, sa katag-iya sa, sa kasari-sari store ko ask hell herper dahil ang tuyo, ang suka, ang mantika imunang gidugangan og tubig para mudaghan. Ang bugas Imunang gisagula na itong baratuho na itong gipalit. No? Kung unsa pa yung mga panikas, mga buhaton, mga kinaiya na di masabtan. And after everything is said, may ngayon, oh, dali na dahi kay mag-ampo na ta. Mag-ampo na ta, grosaryo. No? This is a clear example of a life lacking in integrity. A life lacking in Unity. Yeah. Example, Rani. Because when we examine our lives, there are also compartments like that. And as I've said, God is just one compartment. What Jesus would like to tell us in the Gospel today, more than the political principle of the separation of the church and state, is that we put but God in its rightful place in our lives. That is, to make Him the center of our lives and not just an aspect of it. You know, if God is at the center of our lives, then, then everything else will follow. Dili gani sintro ang ginoo sa atong kinabuhi, no? Everything will be in disorder. Everything will be in disarray. If God becomes the center of our lives, then we, He becomes the source of integration of all the aspects of human life. And when this happens, we see things differently. We begin to see things from the light of faith. We see things the way God sees things. I repeat, God is not just one aspect in life, but He is the essence of who we are and what we do. If you become, if you are, if you are a doctor, for example, you must become a good doctor. If you are a teacher, you must become a good teacher. If you are a public servant, government worker, you must become a better public servant, etc. And this includes the priest. If you're a priest, you should become a good priest. But in order to make this happen, we must give to God what belongs to God. We must put God at the center of our lives. And he becomes the point of reference. From him, we draw out the strength 
to do what we are doing. In Him, we live our lives as we journey every day. And to Him, we set our life's direction and purpose. Let us all stand.